what did the Christians give us? Well, a new conception of God that we just talked about. And number two, a complete change in values, whereby, for example, vengeance, which is a great thing in Greek drama, remember Agamemnon, remember Clytemnestra, vengeance is a great thing. Get vengeance. Get those stinkers. Get them. Get them. And that's a good thing. And hunt them down. And strike them down. Now, forgiveness is good. So you reverse. In, if you're in Greece and you're preaching and you're Paul, then you're saying no to vengeance, yes to forgiveness. That's a complete turnover. Number three, and we could list a whole series of values here that are going to be part of this, but just take that one, forgiveness. Number three, a whole new conception of the community, and that is no longer Bronze Age charioteers conquering, senators in Rome acquiring, but now the community is for caring, for taking care of the community uh, versus the older Greek honor code. And we know exactly how it worked because we know all about these Christian communities in Rome, uh, often headed up by women, often headed up in their homes. There were a number of, of homes in Rome that became famous and are still now known as the foundation of churches that are built over those homes, uh, which was this new uh, community of caring. And a whole new conception of the good life. What is the good life? Is it power, honor? Well, that certainly was what we uh, studied when we were in our Greeks, uh, ta uh, studying the great Greek stories and the great Greek heroes. That was it. Uh, power, honor. Uh, and here, no. Here, now, it is uh, service to your community, uh, charity, uh, kindness to your neighbors, to the sick, um, and that in doing so, you are made better, that you in your life are made better by giving service to poor and sick. And it doesn't matter whether people know you did it. So from the very early days, uh, there was a, an attempt at um, uh, anonymity, and there were all kinds of ways that uh, Christian communities achieved this. My favorite is in Florence. Florence had the misericordia, um, which the key word of it is charity. And the misericordia in uh, Florence, and it's still there, and it's been there for like a thousand years. In the misericordia, you give uh, one day a month, I think, for life. I think that's what it is. One day a month. And you don't it's not the whole day, but but you, you go there and you help one day a month. And uh, and I have friends in Florence who are who are in it or in it. And in order to have it anonymous, that is, so you don't get any credit for it, because if you're doing something to get credit for it, then it's no good, right? Right? If you're going to do good if you help the old lady cross the street only because you think all those people are watching you, then that wasn't a good thing. You're, 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 you're a bad person. You're dragging that poor lady across the street and she didn't even want to cross the street. <laughs> and you just want to get credit for it, right? Well, that's no good. You don't want that. So what you have to do is you want to do good things anonymously. And therefore, the Misericordia in Florence has a wonderful system where you go in the door and you put on your Misericordia outfit, and I'm sure some of you have seen pictures of this, and it includes a black, complete coverage with just peepholes for your eyes and your nose. And then you go out and you get in the ambulance and you go and you help people who are sick. You take them to the hospital. You do all kinds of things. But of course... Foreigners who come to town and see you coming down the street, they get scared to death. Uh, I remember being in Florence when a, a man, American, had been hit by a car and he was on the side of the street. And so we called, you know, to, for help. Uh, somebody went to phone call for help and the Misericordia came. And, <laughs> and the Misericordia ambulance is, I think it's black as I recall. Anyway, so the Misericordia ambulance <laughs> pulled up for this man and all these men in black hopped out of the ambulance and came to him. And he started screaming, no, no, I'm not dying. I'm not dying. I'm okay. I just hurt my leg. 
and we we ran to we could speak Italian so we could say to the men, you know, this friend of mine and I we were there and we said to the Italians, he's mistaken, he thinks you're taking him to the morgue and <laughs> And we explained to him that, no, this is just this wonderful charity in Florence where you do things anonymously, and so this is their outfit. They just look like they're taking you to the morgue. Don't worry. They won't. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's just hilarious. Yeah, it's just hilarious. In any case, um, you, uh, you serve community. You serve community. And that's how you do good. And you do good because it's the right thing to do. You don't do good to get credit for it. You see, that's what happened in the Reformation. We're going to get there next quarter, but, but that's what happened in the Reformation. That's, how Luther, that's why Luther was so furious, because he felt that the whole thing had gone off the track and that people were buying candles and giving money because they were being promised that they'd get their souls out of purgatory, you know, or they'd have spent less time in purgatory. Or to, so it was all, in his opinion, it was all, it was all wrong. And he was right. And here in the beginning, you certainly you did good because it was a good thing to do. Now, most important of all in this was number five, because in all aspects of Christianity, every single detail, there was, unlike anything that existed before, a new emphasis on the individual person. It was an individual relationship between you and Jesus. It was an individual relationship between you and your God. It was you and your creed. It was you. And so all of these things encouraged the emphasis on the individual, which was in concert with the already developing Greco-Roman emphasis on the individual, which was political. And so the two come together now in Rome in this moment in which by the year 300 when Christianity can be legal, you have the elaboration of the accent on the individual, both from the political uh, angle, Greco-Roman political angle, and the Judeo-Christian emphasis on the individual and the individual conscience. So those are the important things that Christianity brought to uh, to the world in the first century. And, of course, you know we can go back to our Giotto painting now for a second and just see some of our of the story, the final story. You know, of course, the last week, the what we call the Passion of Jesus, when he comes to Jerusalem and preaches uh, and has the Last Supper. Here's one of my absolute favorite paintings of all time. Uh, this is Giotto's rendition of the Last Supper, which, as you can see, for half of the men at the table, uh, they are getting no nutrition at all <laughs> because they can't get the food past their halos. <laughs> the, men, the men on our side of the table cannot get the food past the halo. Now, now Giotto in 1300 didn't exactly know what to do about the halo because the halo was still there and it was supposed to be, and these, of course, were wonderful men, so they had to have a halo. Nobody had told them that you could paint a painting without halos. Very soon people were going to do that, but certainly not at this moment. And so he felt that his men at the table all had to have halos, which meant that the men on this side of the table had to have the halos in front of their faces. So, so various of them are trying to sneak a little crumb of bread around the corner of their halo. Mr. Pink over there on the right, he's, he's just trying to get a little something into the side, but he's saying to his friend, what are we supposed to do here? You know, we can't get a piece of bread at this table. Isn't it hilarious? Uh, every painter at this moment is trying all kinds of things. Uh, one, who was his exact contemporary, Duccio, just didn't put any halos on these people on this side of the table, which, of course, was a great idea. And his apostles are much better fed than these. these, these although, they, although these men look like they're getting nutrition somewhere, don't they? Those nice, ample bottoms that are spread out on that bench <laughs> suggest that they've been eating a, a piece or two of bread. In any case, um, here is, of course, the arrest in the garden, um, that uh, Judas, the figure in the gold, is reaching up uh, exactly as it's uh, recounted in Luke, uh, reaches up with the gold and embraces uh, Jesus and kisses him, betrays him to the uh, soldiers. He is arrested and then in the next few days uh, crucified. We, of course, know so much more now about it than uh, 
than the time of Giotto in 1300, and yet almost everything in the account has been corroborated, whether it's archaeology or our general history of the event. Here's Giotto's vision of bringing him down from the cross. His uh, mother is there in the blue, leaning down. Uh, Mary is there, uh, throwing up her hands. Some of the other women are there with him. John is putting his hands back. And so this beautiful rendition of that moment, bringing him down from the cross by Giotto. And then the final story, of course, at the tomb, the resurrection. So those are the events that are still uh, reverberating around the world. As I just said, in Africa, we have millions and millions of people converting in South America, millions and millions converting, and in China, millions. It's 2,000 years. There does not seem to be any relenting of the influence. What it is, what exactly is it? That's what we are asking. It would be very nice if you read some of Acts because it's a wonderful introduction into exactly what it was like for these men, Paul and Luke, to move around the ancient world um, and to preach and to meet people and and uh, argue with them. It's all there in the book of Acts, also written by Luke. If you read the whole thing, you'll notice the point at which it starts to be we. So then he's, he's implying that that's the place where he joined Paul and began to travel with him. Thank you.